All right, guys, so we are in Denver, Colorado, and we just spent two weeks in the 2021 New Camp Tag Boondock Series. We just went from Florida to Colorado in it. So here's a little review for you. The tag has the regular tag version and the boondock version. So the boondock version, you're gonna have upgraded all-terrain tires, some extra steps, wheel wells. Uh, but what's really cool are these fold-out awnings that come out. We just put them away, so we should have showed you. But unzips, has legs that come out, supports. They are perfect. We have one on each side. All right, and back here is the outdoor kitchen. Really cool awning cover for you. Uh, Built-in light here. Built-in LED strip light. Runs all the way across the back. You got your speakers. Outlet. Uh, this is for the plug-in cooler fridge right here. Uh, that is really cool and it fits perfect in here. I believe these do come with uh, Yeti coolers that can slide in here. But having the two different plugs up here keeps this on on battery and when you're plugged up to, to power. Then you do have a little bit of storage on the side as well as this little storage compartment up here and then some hooks. You have a two burner propane stove. Very good sized microwave. And then over here you have your sink. You have your light switch right here, water pump switch. And then underneath, ton of storage. And then right back here is gonna be your, your fresh water tank you can fill up on the outside. And another part of the boondock package is the solar panel right up here. And that charges the battery in the front that we'll show you. All right, so right down here, we have our stabilizing jacks. We have one on each side. Uh, this right here is your drain plug for the sink. You can hook up a just a regular garden hose to that, run it to sewer or wherever you're draining to. And here's a hookup for an outdoor shower. This is the 30 amp marine style twist lock plug. You have your coax cable right here. And then this is the water connection. And that is the fill for the freshwater tank. All right, so what's really cool about this uh, unit is it actually has two doors, one on each side, and they swing open all the way, and they have a little, little latch right here. Latches right in. Cool little window, storage net. And then right up here, you have your patio light. There's a light switch right inside. Again, we have the other awning. In front of the trailer, you have your storage compartment. You have your storage rack. Uh, it's perfect for a generator. That's what we've, we've had on it. And then on either side, you have more storage for gas cans, firewood, things like that. So this in here houses your propane tank, propane connection. You have your battery right down here. And then this is the battery disconnect on and off, depending on if you're boondocking, if you're hooked up, whatever you're doing camping. But really good storage in here for your, your chocks and your, your hoses and your uh, wheel for the, the tongue of the trailer. So the only thing that I don't really like about this, which you can do after the fact, is this front compartment does not lock. It just has these pull down tabs keep it secured but I wouldn't really keep a whole lot of valuables in here what's really cool about this which we did try out when we were in Colorado was this huge front window you're laying in bed you can look right up into the stars and we also watched a bunch of snow as you can see we got dumped on pretty good so this is a great viewing window for for the snow All right, now I'm gonna show you the inside. So Matt kinda of already talked about some storage here, how you can open and close the windows here. The porch lights that he was talking about earlier, right here, and your ceiling light that runs along here. Um, so it kinda of lights up your whole area. 
and then the windows you can have two different forms of shade you can do this or close it at night like that one thing we did notice with these windows are the strings that move the window up and down are very temperamental and sensitive so you have to be very careful moving these up or down or they can come off of their track which we noticed um and matt had to spend a little bit of time fixing one of them so that's kind of weird all the windows open out like this which is cool and then also another tip when you're driving you have to have these down or like i said they'll get off their like base and all the strings will come undone um if it's because it's rocking back here it's like a hurricane so you have to leave them down when we're moving um, while we're over here you have stereo Bluetooth USB you can hook up to your phone it has the speakers outside in the kitchen like Matt said and in here um, right beside the bed and then also you have your heater oh. We put this on here because it has an annoying little red light um, that would keep us up that you can adjust that really pumps out some heat and works in here. You have storage on either side exactly the same. And then you have your AC unit that um, I was worried was going to be like a little loud, but it really wasn't as loud as the Coleman camper. Up here you have storage. You also have um an option to put a tv and then the same storage over here this is your breaker box uh we did blow a couple fuses um this trip we're not really sure why running too many heating pads and Maybe, uh, yeah. electric blankets we're not really sure the puppy blanket yeah but we had to go buy a couple more fuses um you have two plugs over here which would be nice if you had them over here um because we had our laptop plugged in the heating pads like we said electric blankets um also another annoying thing was matt couldn't hang any of his clothes on these hooks because you can't cover the heater um, so my two hooks, we would hang like our towels, our jackets. So pro tip that we should have done beforehand was get some command hooks and hang right here. So we could have just hung some clothes. I mean, we had like wet towels had our wet jackets from the snow and really there's nowhere to hang them outside. So you have to hang them in here. So that's kind of the catch for living where you sleep. Then over here we have two, um, storage compartments on either side as well one thing we came to find that we hated were these corners of both of these storage shelves i hit my head twice matt hit his head really bad and scr scratched his back on them because you're having to move put clothes on inside this tight little area so we should have got some like little foam or rubber um to put around the corners of these because that we could have been concussed <laughs> And then you also have your bedside lights that you can put on blue um, or you can hold down and have bright light, but that's pretty bright. We felt like this like ambiance mood lighting was good. This storage up here we use probably the most. It doesn't look like a lot of storage, but we kept everything up there. So 12 volt over here that we didn't realize until we got in that it had that we hooked the electric blanket up to. Um, we could plug our phones in USB or you can use the regular outlets over there. They also have little cup holders built in, which was nice. And then this storage, it's not a ton, but for like books, magazines, paperwork, stuff like that fits back here. Lastly, in here is this fan and this was kind of a tricky thing for us to figure out a good balance of cold hot airing out the cabin so it wasn't all like muggy and like claustrophobic in here so you can vent it right here just a little but it has a hood so rain and snow wouldn't fall through and then you can also turn it on um and have like a little fan and it really does work well but the one it has zero one two three the one is still very strong and powerful i mean we never had it over that but you do need some like airflow circulating when you have like the heat or it's just very muggy 
So let's look at the under the bed storage and that's about it for the inside. So the number one thing I was worried about staying in here was the mattress. We were even considering putting our queen mattress in here. Well, the catch is it's not a queen and it's not a king. So um, finding bedding that fits it perfect isn't really going to happen. Um, but we were shocked about how comfortable the mattress is. As you can tell, it's not thick at all. It's very thin. But it was more comfortable than the Coleman mattress that came standard in that camper. And we keep referencing the Coleman because that's the RV that we used to use um, and pull before this. But yeah, I mean, two weeks, it was fine. The Coleman, it would kill our back in two days. So we were surprised about that. Um, so you just lift this mattress up. And the reason you can't really put a standard mattress in here is because this bends in the middle, if you can tell. It has a crease in the middle, so each side folds up. Now, of course, I'm sure you could upgrade these, um, but they would have to be custom. So then you just lift this up. It is kind of unbearable when you're changing clothes, you know, twice a day, um, and you're having to lift this. It'd be nice if it had one of those automatic lift. <laughs> this is all your under the bed storage for all of your clothes. So it has quite a bit of space. It's just kind of annoying lifting that up multiple times a day, but I mean, it's doable. So all in all, we loved camping in it for two weeks. We think that it was better not in snow. I mean, yeah. having to go outside to go to your kitchen and to the bathroom is pretty tough. In a in little snow. bit of a blizzard conditions. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not insulated so well. So you could feel a draft coming in from the door. So we would put pillows when we slept at night up on the door, but definitely a lear learning curve, but it was so, so much fun. It's definitely a very good weekend, couple day trip yeah. camper when you're out, you know, in a little bit drier, uh, warmer conditions. Um, I probably wouldn't want to do it again in in the snow. snow like this like yeah. we got but yeah it's been a blast it's been a lot of fun yeah